in the business intent overlays, uh, for each overlay on the bottom far right of the SD-WAN traffic and inter internal subnet screen, there is a LAN and WAN DSCP marking dropdown. That is typically set to trust LAN. That means take whatever DSCP value we saw for the flow on the LAN side and simply remap that onto the tunnel packet on the WAN side. That's actually really cool, by the way. So the, the tunnel packets, even though they're encrypted and you can't see inside them, um, the Silver Peak is marking the individual tunnel packets with the DSCP value that either we remapped in the overlay or that we can or that we saw on the LAN side. And that, so that allows the upstream provider to apply, apply QoS, even if they can't see the port numbers and source and destination IP addresses, they can't see inside of our tunnel but they can see the DSCP value of the tunnel packets themselves. So this is a feature we've had in the product literally since day one. And the way it the way it's implemented by the orchestrator is you set these values over here in the in the bio. And then as traffic matches the bio, they get set to whatever's here. But if you actually go, if you click an appliance and you go to configuration and then QoS policies, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff that the uh, orchestrator automatically configures in the QoS policy for you that facilitates what you've asked for in the overlay. So uh, you can see here that we've said, all right, for the CASB overlay on the SC WAN, we're gonna do LAN and WAN DSCP trust LAN. Now, if we go then go into one of the SC WAN uh, appliances and go to the QoS policy screen, we will see what you see down here at the bottom. There's a row 20,002 overlay CASB, uh, LAN, trust LAN, trust LAN. So it's it's taking this bio configuration and translating that into a QoS policy, which is pushed to all the appliances. It has always worked this way. Um, it's actually quite, quite quite effective, good way of doing it. You can tell the, the entries that are auto created by the orchestrator because they will have a 20,000 priority number. Now, just a quick refresher on that. The priority number here is actually really important. Uh, it, it, it means it tells you a lot about um, what you're looking at. So if the if the num the priority number you see here is between a thousand and nine nine nine, then that's a templated entry. So you can see here I've I've added a I added a QoS policy template, pushed it to all the appliances, and that that entry says domain YouTube overlay unclassified if it's destined for the internet. I want you to force it into the recreational traffic class. And I want you to set BE and BE for both LAN and WAN side QoS. So this is what you would call a, a templated override. And I, you can see here it says YouTube override. I just did this as an example to kind of show what's possible. But those templated entries are 1000 to 9999 and they show up as orange. You don't ever want to mess with those. Don't you? In fact, it, you can't. I don't, I don't believe they can actually be deleted. And even if you do delete one of the orange entries, it'll just come right back as soon as the uh, templates are repushed. So the 20,000 entries are all of the, all of orca the orchest orchestrated, orchestrated entries. Um, these also cannot be edited and they are deployed in conjunction with applying the overlay. So you push the overlay to the appliance, the orchestrator does all the work, sets up these 20,000 uh, priority entries in the QoS policy and away you go. You can also do, you can just go right, literally go into the uh, QoS policy for a local appliance and you can add a snowflake. You can click edit and you can add an entry in the uh, 1 to 999 range, 10,000 to 19,999 and then 20,000 to 25,000 to 65,534. Those are for you as an operator to insert manual entries. Very, very rare that you will do that. Stay away from snowflakes or appliance level configuration um, if at all possible. 